Ladies and gentlemen, boys and pearls, welcome to episode 19 of the Bearded Pearl Podcast. I'm Caleb. I'm Justin. And today is Sunday, October 31st, 2021. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. This is a podcast about knitting, the fiber arts, and other crafty shenanigans. Welcome. It's been a minute. It has been... Many minutes. Almost four months since our last confession. Summer break. Basically took off. <laughs> and by break, you mean it broke us. Right. And today my Halloween costume is the ghost of... Exhaustion. Podcasters past. Present and future. <laughs> Who are presently pondering their future and how they're going to get there. Anywho. Uh, we're, <laughs> we're just going to apologize in advance. If there is any sort of calamity, crashes, uh, what else? I mean, I just saw the, get spilled. the camera shake a, a little bit. Because we not only have one kitten since Gus, uh, we now have two. That was the first part of our disappearance. Where are you? He's right here. Oh, hold on. Okay, we're going to have to try and catch them at some point. The capturing kittens hasn't gone well. So let's let's start way back in the Wayback Machine. In July, we acquired little teeny tiny 200 gram Gus. Yes. Who was this big last time you saw him. Mm -hmm. He is now, what, 16 weeks old? Somewhere around there. 15 weeks old. He's officially been adopted. He is ours. Mm -hmm. So he brought our cat count from... Two to three. Two to three. I'm going to be very distracted trying to catch one of the little demons. This is a tiny glimpse of our life. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the last time we saw you, we also talked about his little tiny leg mm -hmm. that was badly deformed. We don't think it was broken, but it was very crooked. And at the time, we thought it was going to have to be amputated. Well, fast forward to today. I know you posted something online about us doing a lot of physical therapy. Mm -hmm. a, some, little, a little Gus date, a little Gus update. Some warm water baths, some splinting creatively using plastic food containers, and a hope and a prayer from my previous life. And he has all four legs. So leg, leg number four is, I would say, like 95% normal. Well, for Gus, it's like 100% normal, because all of his legs are a little knobbly. <laughs> right, he's got all four. No need to amputate right now, and I think when we had him neutered, the veterinarian at the shelter said all she could really tell at the time was that he had about 50% range of motion in that leg. So not While we've got him, we're going to briefly interrupt that story. And this is Gus's little brother, Why Cinder. are you being so bad today? It's very <laughs> exciting that we're down here. We've not all been down here as a family in a while, and... You know, well, you don't know, but the bomb of crafts has for sure gone off, which is Kitten Playground. So our first disappearance after Gus was caused, or I guess our second disappearance. First one caused by Gus, mm -hmm. second one caused by Little Cinder, who we acquired about six weeks after Gus. Mm -hmm. A little abandoned baby, also 200 grams. <laughs> Gus was attacking baby. At the time, about 10 days old. And so we bottle fed not one, but two little kittens all summer long. Oh, okay. Apparently I'm just going to keep talking. So this is little Cinder. He is Gus's baby brother, although not too baby at this point. And he's around nine weeks old, 10 and weeks old. And this is Gus. And little Gus now weighs four and a half pounds yeah. and is huge. And they're not going to sit here at all. So we'll let no, them go. But, so they've said hello. <laughs> <laughs> so that took up basically... Two months of our lives. Mm -hmm. Bottle raising not one, but two kittens simultaneously on totally different schedules. Well... It was a slight overcommitment. Gus had been weaned for maybe a week. Right. Well... Maybe a week when we got Cinder yep. and started the whole thing over from scratch. And I use we generously. So we basically haven't slept in mm, four months? Oh. I gotta turn it around. Yeah. I forgot. It's Halloween. Happy Halloween. I should I should have used my other pumpkin mug. One of your 40 Halloween themed mugs. 
there's three, yeah, four. <clears throat> so let's see, life, Gus happened. Mm -hmm. Cinder happened. So now, oh, and we officially adopted, adopted Cinder, Cinder as of Friday. On Friday. Mm -hmm. So since we saw you last, our house has officially gone from two cats <laughs> to four cats. We've reached, we've reached max living being capacity in our house. Maximum capacity, cat capacity. <laughs> they're a joy. Every day. It's a blessing. And also they're monsters. Two is maybe easier than one kitten. I don't know. Mm. Okay, so cats. Yeah. That's That's been the story of our lives. We've been to the vet more in the last eight weeks mm -hmm. than we have in the last four years yep. yeah that's been fun we're currently dealing with some sort of food allergy skin problem kitten food induced vomiting with the adult cats because because buster is allergic to the kitten food and won't stop eating said kitten food of which he is allergic to yeah have at least one more vet appointment this week <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. So what else have we been doing other than cats? Uh, you went back to school. Oh god, yeah. I don't know if we had, I don't remember if we actually said that you were going back to school or not. We did. We did? Yeah, because that happened like in May. Yes. So the went... short version of this story is I have no free time left. And right. a new source of a little bit of anxiety and sometimes some tears. You Voluntarily. Know, it's... It's... By choice. It's okay. Um, it's actually been a blast. I'll, we, I'll say that. It's been a very good thing, but definitely work, school, kittens, yes. life. It's we, enough. Um, I don't remember if we had said that we were on vacation with Scott and John. We did not, because that happened in August. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Uh, it's so been a while. Time is, time is a construct that does not exist. So that um, was that was a fun thing for us mm -hmm. in August. About you're gonna hear all kinds of noises today. Just go with it. Right. It's the sound of demons digging back to their furry lairs, ghouls, ghosts, and goblins. Oh yeah, they're all underneath me too. Sorry, very distracted. So we got to meet Scott and John from the Sweet Tea No Shade podcast. Mm -hmm in August at a really nice bed and breakfast in La Crosse, Wisconsin, which is about halfway between them and us. That was a wonderful weekend. It was, it was a lot of fun. The weather was beautiful. Company was amazing. The location was great. We hit it off really well and actually have plans to see them again next weekend. We're meeting up with them in Chicago to go see the Magic Flute at the Lyric Opera. Well, we were friends until they called us the Busted Pearl publicly. <sighs> On their podcast, they <laughs> not just once, many times, called us the Busted Pearl. I mean, it's pretty fitting right now. I, it, yeah. 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 But we, we had a great time. We're actually really, really looking forward to seeing them again. And really nice to... They were the first people that we met that we'd been really interacting with quite a bit online throughout COVID and had gotten to know virtually, but then meet up in person, which is a really fun experience. Mm -hmm. We literally just sat down and it was like, we'd known each other for a really long time. It was great. Yeah. And they're, they're characters. Um, so that happened. And then I finally got my wrist thumb issue fixed a couple weeks ago. It was actually the, the Tuesday before we left for Rhinebeck. So I haven't really knit since May of this year and had just kind of started again a few weeks ago and had had to just finally call it and get the cortisone injection and that worked a miracle. Which is finally about 10 days after your injection really started to help. Yes, I have no issues, no pain. I'm still taking it easy, but it's incredible how much that has helped. Yeah. So going chronologically, Kitten, Scott and John, Kitten, at the end of August, my mom came for a visit. That's right. 
which is relevant to this conversation because not only was she a scream <laughs> at the time, my mother, <laughs> my mother got here and we had Gus who was, he was weaned. So maybe seven weeks old, maybe seven weeks at the time. Cause he hadn't been neutered yet. Maybe a little bit older than that. Seven weeks old. We had just gotten Cinder three days before my mom got here. Mm -hmm. So literally like a 16-day-old kitten that we're bottle feeding every three hours. So my mom had a great time with that. It was that same weekend that Buster tried to kill himself in your loom while we were with the ladies. It was. At the quilt shop. So my mom gets here. We have one Great Dane-sized crate with Gus in it. Mm -hmm. at, you know, he was staying in it at night or just starting to get really comfortable with the litter box. So when we would leave, Buster tried to kill himself, hurt his back leg and his back and was... He really didn't. He just jumped on my loom thinking it was a flat surface and then... Well, that's what we think Twisted happened. himself through it. Yeah. We have no idea other, there, other than there was loom carnage and a completely wounded cat when we got home. So he was in a second Great Dane-sized crate in our living room, confined and medicated, howling 24 hours a day until we got so tired of it, we let him out. Mm -hmm. He is better now. Well, well, that's better. Now he's vomiting and apparently yeah. allergic to kitten food and ripping all of his hair out. And then on top of Buster's crate, we had a giant Rubbermaid tote with cinder in it. So my mom came in the middle of Chaos. Cat hell. Which was great. We were literally surrounded by crates. But we had a really great time and did a lot of crafting. Mm -hmm. My mother is a sewist and quilter. I was trying to think if she would call herself a retired quilter, but she's mostly been doing mission stuff for church. But cranked out an entire quilt top while she was here. Mm -hmm. And has now completely <clears throat> reinvigorated her love of quilting. I think we took her to four quilt shops. And has picked up her grandmother's flower garden quilt, which she's hand-stitching. And like any good quilter, now has three active projects going. Right. One that's 20 years old, one that's two months old, and then the third one that she started while she was here. So that mm -hmm. was a lot of fun. We did a lot of, a lot of sewing. We spent a lot of time in the basement watching movies and... Crafting, sewing. Mm -hmm. That was good. Okay, then you hurt your wrist. Your wrist is better. Wrist is better. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Rhinebeck. So we drove, which is about a 15 hour drive from here. 15 with no stops. With no stops, right. But we decided to make a halfway point in Youngstown, Ohio, which we did. The first, the first year I went, um, and it worked out really well because then it breaks it up pretty evenly. Nice hour drive, you know, you can get there in the day and you're not completely wiped out or exhausted. Um, so we stopped in Youngstown and then made it to our... We should say that we went with Kathy, Kathy, and Renee. Yes. And since we, we met a lot of you <laughs> at Rhinebeck, or many of you, and many of you got to meet them as well. Yeah, we, we went in two cars, we kind of caravaned there, spent the night together in Youngstown. Yes. They have named themselves the Corydales, <laughs> as like the backup singing group, um, which I love. And so, yes, many of you got to meet Kathy, Kathy, Renee, who are our knitting, porch knitting, sewing, quilting friends. Yeah, um, cooking, gardening. Yes. They, they're our enablers and in many in ways, and in many ways, our teachers, way. they're, they're in no way our backup, uh, backup girl group because they teach us half of what we learn in, a, in any given time frame. Yes. I, they are a unbelievable wealth and pool of knowledge. And a uh, lot of fun. Oh yeah. Um, so we, we went to Rhinebeck and we'll get a little bit more into that later, but first we started off at Indian Untangled. And that's where we got to meet our amazing friend Michelle in real life. I mean, we had we had done Zoom knitting, and we had I mean we've talked to Michelle for a year and a half, a year, 
a year. Yeah. At least. And so to get to meet her actually in person was wonderful. It's kind of a funny thing, too. Being a virtual employee, I'm a little bit accustomed to meeting people virtually or working with them for a period of time and maybe not meeting them in person right away. But meeting Michelle was funny because we, like you said, we talked to her all the time. We had done Zoom knittings. We had done all kinds of things. And... I kind of forgot when we met her that we hadn't actually met her yet. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. It, that's the beauty of community and the internet. <laughs> Aww. She wants to be cuddly. Um, so we helped Michelle vend at Indie Untangled, which was an absolute blast. We had an amazing time. And we got to meet Jennifer and Angela. Yes. From Must Love Yarn. Yarn. So that was also really fun. They're <laughs> they're a hoot. Uh, they're absolute characters. Um, it was yeah. a great time. We, I have never been to India Untangled, but I've heard so many wonderful things about it. And, oh gosh. <laughs> uh, you know, you see all of these, like, before and after Rhinebuck shows, and there's so many popping up, like Cake Palooza was one, um, I think Wolf Oak was another this year, and so we participated, like I said, in Indian Tangled with Michelle, and helped out at her booth, and it was so much fun. The facility was beautiful. It was, I think it was called HITS, H-I-T-S, it's a, an acronym, I believe. Isn't that what it's called? Uh, I don't remember. Something like that. Was it a phenomenally beautiful equestrian like an outdoor equestrian park that had arenas and open air buildings and we were in one there were two buildings with vendors and the vendors were kind of divided pretty equally oh are you sneezing bless you thank you sorry <clears throat> the vendors were divided between the two spaces and there was a whole arena between us so we were probably a thousand feet from the other group if not a little bit farther mm -hmm. and we were in an open air building so it was totally open on the side across from us and then behind us it was glass walls that had doors that were open which was really nice mm -hmm. it was well organized i feel like we had plenty of space and then there was so much distance between us and the other group that people could walk back and forth and it d seemed to divide the crowd mm -hmm. pretty evenly. The weather was beautiful. I have to sneeze again. <laughs> oh, you're sneezing. The cat is growling. Uh, I'll just keep going. You do your thing. Thank you. <clears throat> this was my first time in Rhinebeck and my first Indie Untangled. And we'd heard some stories about how crowded it was or how many people were there. And this year it was divided into four time slots. And... You signed up for a time Which slot. I feel like it's something that you they have done yours. in previous years. But I think the, the limits were much more um, concise and strict mm. following COVID regulations. I thought the day was great, though. Now, the weather in New York was, I think, as it always is, and just like it was here, where India untangled, I think it was 78 degrees mm -hmm. on Thursday, Friday. Friday? So we were sweating to death. I was literally wearing shorts and a t-shirt. But the morning started off really cold. Oh yeah. It was no, like 50 degrees 50. in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> I had on shorts and a t-shirt. I had on some knit socks in Michelle's yarn so that I could advertise for her a little bit in my Birkenstocks. And then I put on a, it was a worsted weight shawl, but it, now we're crooked. <laughs> Whatever. We're going to go with it. A very small, lightweight, worsted weight shawl, and we were hot by yep. the afternoon. It, I mean, it, thank it goodness for the breeze; otherwise, it would have been terrible. The upper sixties, low seventies, um, which was lovely weather. Oh, low seventies, like seventy-eight on Friday. Was so it we, that warm? Yeah, we were sweating to death. I just know I got really hot all of a sudden. Plus, we were masked the whole time. Masks were required mm -hmm. at India Untangled, which worked out really well. It was all the vendors, all the participants. It was a lot of fun. It was fun. We were totally unprepared. So there were five of us in the booth. Michelle, Angela, Jennifer, 
and then you and I, mm -hmm. and we were thinking in our heads, what are we going to do for the day? Right. It'll be a slow burn. It'll be fine. What we were unprepared for was the stampede of people that made a beeline right for Michelle's booth the minute the first group was let in. And I think, I think, but what did it start at nine? 10? 10. 10. I think at 10.05, there were 30 people in line to check out, mm -hmm. which was a little bit overwhelming. But a lot of fun. But a lot of fun. We, Everyone got really beautiful things. We got the chance to talk to a lot of people, which was a blast. After that, it got better. That was really the one overwhelming yeah. part, but. I think the initial, you know, kind of Russian excitement. A really, a really well organized event, though, well. at least from my perspective. Certainly, the vendors would have more information. We were kind of along for the ride, mm -hmm. and maybe the participants would feel a little bit differently. But it was a great experience for us. I feel like there was a great variety of vendors mm -hmm. and products available, and it was really well done. Yeah, we had a. A lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We would definitely go again. We got there at 6.30 in the morning-ish, mm -hmm. I think, to set up. Or maybe close to 7. It was it was early and it was a little bit away from the house we were staying at. We didn't sit down between 7 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. when we got the van packed up to leave. But it was fun. It was hectic. Yeah. It And we don't say that as a complaint. Oh, no. It's just it was a very busy a day. A lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So then the day after was the official start of Ryan Beck. And that was on Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to sneeze again. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I don't know. Uh, so we got up and, you know, made sure that we were in line. I can hear it it's, coming. It's right there. And the line went fairly quickly um, we were maybe only 50 people deep at the entrance that we were in mm -hmm. which was really close to the parking lot and again i think it opened at nine and we were in by not even 905 we yeah, were it we went, were right it went in. very quickly um i think the expeditious part of it was from buying your tickets online mm -hmm. um, they did end up having tickets available for purchase in person but they, I don't think they really knew that they were going to do that until maybe right before. Um, because up until that point, you could only purchase your tickets online in advance. And so I think that just helped speed things along. And I would happily do that again ne next time. So easy. We just popped right in. Mm -hmm. um, met a lot of wonderful people. And the, my favorite part of this entire experience was... The whole two-day trip to Rhinebeck, you said, I'm not going to buy any yarn. I don't need any yarn. We've got a basement full of yarn. And you walked away with two sweater quantities worth of yarn. Are you going to sneeze again? It's, it's right there. <laughs> I did say multiple times I wasn't going to buy any yarn. And I feel like, I mean, yes, I did come home with two sweater quantities worth of yarn. But how can you not at Rhinebeck buy at least a little something? My favorite part of the trip was not attacking me for saying I wasn't going to buy anything, even though I did. <laughs> My favorite parts were, number one, getting to meet so many people. Mm -hmm. So many people. People were so kind and came up to us, which is still a really funny thing. We got to meet, oh my gosh, I think it was maybe 9.30 when I saw, I saw Ray first. Ray and Kevin from Needles at the Ready. Mm -hmm. I saw them walk out of a building and I literally jumped Ray from behind. I all but jumped on his back. <laughs> totally unannounced. He hadn't seen us. And I literally just came up behind him. Uh, so we got to meet Ray and Kevin. We have some really funny pictures, actually. I think yes. my favorite picture from Rhinebeck is a picture uh, of the four of us and then one with the ladies on, was it the second day when we Sunday. were smart enough to have someone take our picture? Yeah. But we got to meet them. They were with Todd Michael Thomas. So we got to meet Todd for the first time. Oh my gosh, we met so many people. I made a list and there's 50 people that I'm going to forget about. Yeah. So that was one thing, getting to meet people. Yes, getting and then to meet people in person. In person, for real, was 
was so nice. Just a breath of fresh air. And my other favorite thing was all of the inspiration, which is how I ended up with two sweater quantities worth of yarn. Because which is how it happens. <laughs> everyone was walking around. I wore a poncho on day one because it was also 75 degrees. So I wore a poncho and shorts and a t-shirt. Yep. And was quite warm by the end of the day. It was not bad most of the day. But then day two, I think it was only like 65 and so there were a lot of really pretty sweaters. There were, there were some beautiful ones out there. And you can't see them and not buy yarn. Right. It's not possible. You just have to. I also love that it's... <laughs> oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> You're going to be doing this the whole time. It's going to keep happening. Ooh. You have some sort of plague. Rude. I don't know. I don't know what's happening to you. It's probably because... You haven't even been outside today. Doesn't matter. No, I haven't. Maybe you're allergic to podcasting. <sighs> That's not true. <laughs> oh, Gus is asleep. On a yeah. box of yarn, on a quilt. What was I saying? Meeting wonderful people. Lots of sweaters, inspiration. Weather. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, I feel like I have to sneeze again. <laughs> Your sneezing has distracted me. I'm so sorry. So, let's see. We got to meet a ton of people. Uh, who did we meet? Oh, we, we got to meet Jill Zielinski, Nitarella. We met Ray and Kevin and Todd. Uh, we got to meet Vincent from Vesuvius Crafts. Who is a lovely human being. So nice. I also had no idea he was so tall. I mean... We are not tall. I was going to say, compared to, compared to everybody else, like, we are not tall. <laughs> but yes, he is almost a foot taller than us, but so kind. Just a lot of fun to talk to. Really nice to get to meet. Keep talking. I'm going to go take her this last news. I'm sorry. What are you doing? <laughs> Let's see. Who else did we meet? We met Jill Zielinski, Nitarella, which was, I think I hugged her five times in about five minutes, so... Sorry, Jill, uh, for all of the hugging, but she is, if it's possible, she is even more kind and friendly and adorable in person than online, which is hard to believe, but just so nice to meet her. Who else did we meet? We got to meet Michelle. Uh, we met Rick from Whim Whimsy Stitches. We met Jake from Ken Yarn, who I managed to not call Ken. I, I did call him Jake, but he was really kind and and really nice to talk to for a bit. Uh, we met Kate and Kim from Knitting Posse. And I'm back. Back with the cat. Back with the cat. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. Yes. Shamika Clark yes. of Mika Mika Makes, who is also a fabulous human being. Um, who else do we get to meet? There are so many. And it, you know, Rhinebeck itself is just a rush of creative inspiration and emotion and like happiness and, and god fine get down and like it's, a, it's like it's like a two-day whirlwind of all things crafty and that includes you know like i said the inspiration and the people and it's a rush it's a bit overwhelming too we're we're used to the wisconsin sheep and wool festival which is very large yes but Rhinebeck is probably twice as big, which might make ours sound small then, but Rhinebeck is massive. I mean, there's probably a dozen buildings yeah. to go through, but we had a blast. It was wonderful. Yeah. I'm so excited and so happy to go back. And So thank you for everybody that said hi. We got to take a lot of pictures. It was great to be tagged in a lot of pictures because then... We got to go back and see some of the ones that we were in but didn't take, which was a hoot. Oh. And if we're ever out and you want to say hi, please do so. We we loved getting to meet people in person and, you know, seeing people that we have talked to. And um, I learned that I might have a little bit of social anxiety. <laughs> there's just a lot of people after not really being <laughs> out with people for a year and a half. Um, yes. But it was wonderful. That was a real thing. But a lot of fun. So, right back day two, we get there, and we get to meet Ray's mom. 
Yes. Who is wonderful. And a really good hugger. A really good hugger. And so we're talking for maybe 15 minutes. Now, I'll preface this. I'll interrupt you and preface by saying Ray and Kevin came up for the day on Saturday. Yes. And we're not planning on coming back on Sunday. So no part of this was premeditated. We didn't find out until we were on the way that they were coming for day two. They felt like they were going to miss things because there's too much to see all at once. So right. we didn't even know we were going to see them until we were driving in. So then we're, we, we see them, we're talking, hanging out, and we've probably been chatting for 15 minutes before there's this like an epiphany moment where I look over at Kevin and we're wearing almost the exact same thing. And then I bring that to everyone's attention and they're like, oh my gosh, you are, how funny. And then I immediately look to you and Ray, who are also wearing almost the exact same thing. Not the same thing as you and Kevin, but the same thing as each as other. As each other, mm -hmm. yeah. Completely unplanned, total accidental twinning. It is like the Rhinebeck photo that broke the internet, because, I mean, completely unplanned. I'm going to show it, and for those who didn't see it. <laughs> so we took a... I mean... You and Kevin both had on gray pants, orange shirts, yep, gray sweaters. and gray sweaters. And Ray and I both had on blue jeans and green sweaters. And he had on a gray shirt and I had on a light blue shirt. I mean, it was hilarious. And I, I'm going to show it one more time just because I love this picture. This is my second favorite picture from Rhinebeck the whole time. I'm covering your face up. That was a good one. But, I mean... And the fact that we had been talking to each other for a good amount of time before anyone noticed was even more funny. Which then became quite entertaining. But it was right. Um, so our accidental 20 moment. And this is my this is... favorite picture from Rhinebeck. Yes. This is walking in on day two with Kathy, Kathy, and Renee. And we were smart enough the second day to ask somebody to take our picture. But right. a, a good time. So much fun. But it was wonderful. So, and we bought things. Do we want to talk about that next? Yes, let's get into the nitty gritty of it. I'm sweating. And I mean, you're also wearing a beautifully finished sweater. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, do you want to start or do you want me to? Go for it. Okay, I'll start. I organized mine in the Untangled and then Rhinebeck. Oh, you did? Because I learned that I have maybe some social anxiety and more OCD than maybe I realized. Okay. Um, Which is amazing because I am completely unorganized. I bought this beautiful bag from Beautiful Sister. Beautiful Sister. 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 S Y S T E R. Oh, just. Um, even though there are two. Correct. And they are just out of Chicago. So they are. Like Heather our, and Hillary. Like they're like our Midwest sisters from different misters. Our new best friends. Yes, our new best friends. They um, were we, vending at India Untangled across and over just a little bit Correct. and heather is a scream she's a blast i love her hillary probably is also we didn't talk to her as much as heather so yeah we kind of we kind of we kind of stole heather um so i bought the kit for the coming together shawl which you stole from me heather was wearing it and it was stunning i did not steal it from you and I said, I'm going to go buy that shawl. And then I went and bought kit. this kid. And so, she said, oh my gosh, come over. We have colors. And then I made the mistake of letting you go over. And you bought mine and your kit. So. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so this is the kit that I got. And I did get a different color set. So these are the, this is the, I would say purple periwinkle. There's also light gray in there. Um, and it came with uh, a lotion bar and the pattern and it also came with a project bag if you wanted that to match, but I have enough project bags. Plus, I also bought this beautiful bag from them, so I didn't need one. They but, make those bags. Yes. So I'm really excited <clears throat> to make the shawl. I love the colors. I, I wear a lot of blues and purples, but I don't, I don't really knit with a lot of blue and purple. I'll tell you what I learned about knitting when we were in Rhinebeck. I need to knit more shawls. Which is funny, because you don't like to wear shawls. I know I don't. Which is why I knit shawls, because I wear shawls. Then but I, I wanted to wear them there. 
and I need more. Okay. Then, <laughs> uh, at Indy, before the market opened, the vendors were able to shop around for an hour. So this was a booth that was at the end of our kind of aisle. Uh, so happy Jane. And this is her sustained decay. Oh my gosh, I didn't get the chance to go over there and say hi to them. Their booth was packed the entire time. They have beautiful yarn. Yeah. Uh, it's... So the three skeins that I got are the Sustain DK, which is 140 yards, 50 grams, 70% domestic merino, 30% domestic corrido. Beautiful. It's got that love, lovely, like, kind of rustic texture, gorgeous colors. This is the forest color, right? So I don't know what I'm going to do with three skeins of that, but... Stash it. I had to have it. And then from the show... Um, I also got these fun little stitch markers, which I can't even begin to tell you where they're from. 29 Bridges Studio. Here we go, if I read it. It's really tiny. Um, these are stitch markers that have 25 and 50 on them. So when you're casting on, here, I'll take some out of the container. When you're casting on at the, you know, interval of... 25 or 50 stitches, so you don't have to go back and recount uh, 300 Those stitch cast on. Those would have worked on. perfectly for the sweater you just cast on. Right. What? I forgot about them. <sighs> Whatever. So, Someone was going to think it whether I said it or not. So, there you go. It's such a great idea. It really is. And that way that, you know, once you count that 50 stitch set or 25 stitch set and place the marker, you don't have to continuously recount that section. Plus, they're beautiful stitch markers. They are. They're, they're a very nice weight. Um, they're metal. Shiny, heavy. Beautiful. And they were not that expensive for the set. Which is why I got two. Because <laughs> I could have used them yesterday. And then Michelle Wollens and Nosh, her show exclusive colorway was Cornucopia. And I bought a skein of DK. Actually, I bought two skeins of DK. And it is 100% Superwash Merino 3-ply, 243 yards for 100 grams. And so the main color is that deep plummy purple. I should show a picture of it. Yes. <clears throat> and then there are maybe eight or nine different colors that are kind of striped in between. It You'd is, think is, we would know since we were selling it for seven hours, but yeah, I, don't. I do not. It is gorgeous. So it's the... There you go. Not the best picture, but... Yeah, it's a great picture. I mean, well, I guess you can see it much larger on the screen. Yeah. Um, so it's beautiful. It is stunning in person. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I kind of want to make mittens. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. And... I don't know why I got two skins then, because I can make a pair of mittens with one. One to use and one to stash. <laughs> there you go. Because we have a problem. And then I got from the 29 Bridges place... The, this like killer kitty enamel pen I just thought it was so funny I had to get it and that was my indie purchase I have yours? purchases yeah also I apologize I don't know like what kind of sinus demon has hit me in the face but now I'm like all sneezy and stuffy my allergies have gotten so bad I know I've mentioned it several times that I've been taking Claritin D all year and I am now having some sort of drainage moment where I'm going to be clearing my throat the whole time. I'm going to go see an allergist. I'm over it. I mean, I don't mind taking probably the Claritin D. Cats. Right. I know that's exactly what they're going to tell me. So. so how many skeins of this did we come home with? Oh, you also bought a fingering weight. Oh, that's right. I'm like, why do I have this? Because I'm knitting with it already. Surprise. So that's mine. <laughs> yeah, so, so you also got this. So I bought a skein of the Cornucopia in fingering weight, which is what I've got here. It's also right. in the Superwash Targi nylon base, which is beautiful to knit with. So this one's actually yours, but I'm knitting with mine already, so I'll show it to you in a minute. And then I bought this other colorway from Michelle that's called Sushi, which I will now pull up because it's on that same Instagram post. It looks exactly like sushi, which I think is so cool. I remember seeing this when Michelle was dying up samples and knew I had to have it. And so I bought it. 
Yes. All of her stuff was beautiful. Is that it for your indie? No, I have one more thing. What's that? The kit that you bought for me. But what I was going to say is, standing in Michelle's booth, I was laughing because all but maybe two colors that we didn't already have, we bought. Because I love her colorways. And... Well, and then, she... Before she puts, you know, colorways on the website, or if she's, like, testing... I'm going to um, get my other thing. She will send us pictures of what she's working on. And then we're like, oh my gosh, we have to have it because it's beautiful and they're always stunning. So that's how we get into trouble. Yeah. Where I was going with this, thinking about, oh, I just had seven thoughts all at once. My first thought was one of the highlights for Indie Untangled and spending time in Michelle's booth. Those of you that have watched or know me at all know that I'm obsessed with self-striping sock yarn. It was a lot of fun to get to talk to people who didn't know what self-striping sock yarn was or had never used it before. Right. So I had a lot of fun talking to people about patterns and striping and Josh and his Typhoon shawl probably saw an influx uh, of purchases, if anything, just due to us in our, our, our I, small circle. That, because is, that is one of my favorite shawls. I've, I've worn it on the podcast before. Yeah, you had your shawl on. But I... I I ha no, you did I have it on or did you take it? Didn't you wear it the second day at Rhinebeck? I did. But I don't remember if I wore it at You did not Indy. wear it at India Untangled. Because it was too hot. Opportunity missed, yeah. yeah. This is my kit for the coming together shawl that we also got it. Beautiful sister. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say seven sisters. Not the right thing. Different place. Different place. This is the colorway that is in the picture on the pattern mm -hmm. and on their Instagram post. And it is, let's see, I'm trying not to hit the microphone. It looks like that. And absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to knit with it. I got the kit without a bag. Correct. But with the lotion bar. Yes. And the pattern. And the pattern. I'm going to throw that over there. So that was all I got. Two skeins of self-striping sock yarn and a shawl kit. Because I realized I need more shawls. Right. Not bad so for then, day one. Yeah, that was that was yarny purchases day one. Then it was Ryan Beck. And so... The f All hell broke loose. Huh. Yeah. So I knew I wanted to buy a basket. I ended up buying two. One's upstairs. I'll show it next time. Um, but so I initially bought this basket to carry my purchases around in, which was very smart on my... In the gate, 9 o'clock, 9.05, first purchase, gigantic yeah. basket this to fill up. This beautiful basket. I love it. And then the first thing I put in this basket was this mug. Did we break your mug? Uh, no, it was a bubble. Oh. That had chipped off. It's a little shibby mug. It's really cute. Do you remember where you got it? I can't read the stamp on it. So no. I want to say Stanhope, but I'm not. I'm not certain. She had a lot of beautiful things. I think her name is Stacy Stanhope. Um, I tried finding a website and I couldn't. Um, she has a Facebook page, but I don't know if she actually sells online. But beautiful mugs, and she had a ton of different pottery that was this kind of bisque and blue. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, that's why I got the little sheet mug. It's true. So basket and mug. You had both of those purchased maybe within 15 minutes of us walking in the door. Oh, I was on a mission. Mugs and, and baskets and yarn. Oh my. Oh my. Then That's what this episode should be called. Yeah. Then our Kathy, i.e., who was with us had stopped and found this beautiful Cormo yarn, which is this natural kind of grayish taupe color. And she bought a sweater quantity. And so then I had to go and buy a sweater quantity. And it's from Will You Farm Yarn in Linden, Vermont. This is a two ply light worsted, which I would argue is actually a solid worsted. 90% uh, Cormo wool and 10% black fine wool about 220-ish yards a skein, 
but it is definitely worth the wait. It's it's pump. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous, <clears throat> and it is it is soft and bouncy, and so I bought enough to make a sweater, which I've actually already cast on. Surprise, surprise. Um, so those. What? What? I'm laughing that you showed all of the skeins. Oh, instead of just one. <laughs> and then threw them on the floor. <laughs> Fine. Um, I, I, it doesn't appear that they have a website, but. Also, very nice, nice people. Very, very nice people. Gorgeous yarn. I am so excited to, to work with that. And then I bought... And that's a natural, undyed... Correct. That is an undyed oatmeal -y color. Then where, where do I go from here? We stopped at the Bartlett. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Bartlett Yarns. Bartlett from, Yarns booth. From Maine. And... Who operate the only... Spinning mule spinning mule mill in the country right it's called a mule mm -hmm. um look it up it's they, there's a lot of information about it it's very cool they, they used to be very popular and then you know as spinning became more commercialized the mules not bartlett correct i mean yeah. bartlett has been popular. still popular yeah um the spinning mule is an actual device that helps wind on cones and stuff like that it's fascinating they have they have great videos um, but so this also is, lovely people. Also lovely people. This is a cone of so all of this is the two ply sport, and this is I don't know if this is a natural color or just blended, um, but it's a kind of a a heathered grayish brown, and I've got these other four colors to go with it, and some sort of color work sweater. I have no idea what I'm gonna make. I am open to pattern suggestions, so if you have a recommendation, please put it in the comments because I am finding the most difficult portion of this is not buying the yarn, but trying to find a pattern to use it. But I love these colors together. So this will be my main color and then all my contrasts. All of this yarn goes so well together because it's got that beautiful heathered. Would you call palette. that green or blue? How dare you bring this topic up again? I would say green. Okay. <laughs> we are not going to start another blue-green debate. It wasn't meant to be an argument. I was genuinely curious because I would call that very green. And I think the color looks totally accurate yes. on the screen I would, right I would now. say it's very much green. Mm -hmm. Like a... Like a it's like nope, a, a minty, green. minty green. I was going to say like a sea foam, but a sea foam could be blue or green. <laughs> That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. It's green. So those are my co contrast. Then we, when we saw our dear friend Jill Zelinsky, Nidorella, we stopped in the is it Zeilinger mm -hmm. booth, and I got two skeins, which is where she was was because correct because she has her own. They are the mill that is spinning her new line of yarn. Yes. Which is not what this is. Correct. So I don't know what possessed me to get this yarn. Um, other than that, it was beautiful. But it is Alpaca Angora Merino. It's a two-ply fingering, approximately 200 yards per 60 grams a skein. And so I figured I would make some sort of lovely shawl. And I say I don't know what possessed me to buy it because Angora and Alpaca is like grounds to be fuzzy around our beard and like neck hair. So if I make it into a shawl, I guarantee you I'll be having to pull like fuzzy, like pills off of it. But it's beautiful. It is gorgeous. Also undyed in this kind of snowy white cream color. Mm -hmm. um, a lovely softness, bit of a halo. So I'll make some sort of fun. I was thinking maybe like a half hat if I have enough yardage. 400 yards is probably stretching it, but I'll make some sort of fun show. You could always combine it with something. I could. Plus, or I could buy another skein. You could buy mine. more from them online. Then I purchased some towels that I have the embroidery patterns somewhere. 
but these are just plain kitchen towels that have a fun sort of pattern woven into them. And so that embroidery will go on the plain space. Different colors. In theory, this would be, these would be Christmas gifts. In theory. In reality, I probably won't get to them until For which year? Exactly. Um, so I got those, and then I stopped at the Matter Root main booth. And I'm so excited, because I got this little sheepy t-shirt. And then, they said that they had like a 2 for 40 special, or something like that, and instead of... You're always down for a bargain. I know. And then so I got this other shirt. <laughs> and this is a little Shetland sheep. Well, you were almost at a t-shirt, so it was a smart purchase. Hmm. I just purged my closet. Calm down. And it's got a sheep on it. Calm down. Hmm. But, yes. Sheep shirt. And then I got a little bit of wool for wool applique. And so I got these colors. And this one actually has sparkles in it. I don't know if you can... Okay, you can. It's very cool. But so I've been really big into the wool applique recently. Um, yeah, you've picked up a whole new hobby since we saw everyone last. At, le at least one new hobby? Maybe two. Who knows? Um, what was the other one? I'm not sure. <sighs> Hiding hobbies. Um, so, <laughs> the it's a talent, okay? Um, my hobby is hiding hobbies. <laughs> because my wrist was basically... Out Publicly of on YouTube. Stop shaming me. Um, because my wrist was basically out of commission since May, I needed to find something else to do so I wouldn't go crazy. And I was actually able to embroider and... I wasn't shaming you, by the way. I was connecting the dots in case people... I think you've only posted maybe one picture, but this is a new hobby yes. that you so have... Yes, so I've gotten into wool, applic wool felt applique. Since you weren't able to knit. Correct. And, and you've I've been, been doing a lot of sewing. So then that is the wool that I bought. Mm -hmm. Nice and wintry. And... That's it. Those are my Rainback purchases. What about you? I only have two. I'm back. Oh, so is this how you're supposed to do it? Just grab one skein, mm -hmm. not all of I them? I bought this. I mean, I could try and pick up all of the yarn, but I did not do that. You're not as delicate. When we met Jill at the Zeilinger booth, I was excited to get to see in person. I'd been waiting because I knew that she was going to be there. And her yarn Fully. line, North Bay Fiber, just launched five or six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Fairly recently. Just a, just a few weeks before Rhinebeck, although she had made the announcement a while ago that she would be launching her yarn line. So I bought a sweater's quantity of the Heritage DK weight. So that's the weight. It's 100% Targi Polypay. It has a really fine micron. So it, it feels almost like a cross between Merino and almost like a Merino Targi is kind of what it feels like. But the Polypay is a almost a blend breed, a really nice all-purpose sheet but this is in the unnatural undyed colorway it's kind of a cream it is the natural undyed not unnatural <laughs> whatever i meant to say natural undyed thank you i can't read i mean both words are right next to each other here so it's kind of a cream color and i'm going to be knitting she has a new pattern coming out yes i know what i'm going to knit with it it's a simple pullover just textured do you have a picture? I can, yeah. Um, I can sure find one real quick. Oh, sure. North Bay Fiber. Jill was wearing this sweater at Rhinebeck. We also got to meet her husband, and I'm so sorry I cannot remember his name, but he was also 
lovely to me. So here's a, a close up of the pattern. It's an all over textured, almost like a basket weave pattern. And she was wearing the sweater and was brilliantly prepared. And even though the pattern hasn't launched yet, she had with her the yardage requirements requirements for each different size in the sweater. She is also very well prepared. And I believe the pattern is writ, written, writ, written, wow, <laughs> hi. <laughs> I'm just going to leave. We are the busted pearl. <laughs> We are. I didn't even feel that, but that is not true. I was quite busted in the 10 minutes before we started today, which involved spilling tea twice, a cat running across spilling the table. Spilling your tea and my tea, which is currently a blend. I, I mixed two teas together, a black tea and a cranberry tea. So it is very red yeah. and highly... Oh, I literally stained. showed the picture of the sweater and didn't bother to look at the name of it, which is actually what I was doing here. So the sweater is called the North Bay Raglan. After North Bay Fibers. Yeah. North Bay Fiber. One, one fiber. Excuse me. So I'm going to knit that sweater, but Jill was prepared with yardage counts for the sweater, and the pattern is written as a crop, is what I was trying to say, not writ as a crop, but written as a cropped sweater. So she also had the yardage if you want to knit it full length. So I was able to get the right yardage for this, and I'm really excited That'll to cast beautiful. it on. Yeah, I think it'll be... It, it's such a simple texture, but one that I think really shows off the yarn nicely. I think the yarn shows off the pattern nicely. And I think it'll be one of those staple sweaters in my wardrobe. I don't have a plain cream knit sweater. And I'm really excited about that. I feel like the theme this year was... Natural. Like natural and... Maybe our theme. I don't know if that was well, everybody yeah. else's. There was a lot of color at Rhinebeck. So that was my first purchase at Rhinebeck, and my other purchase, again, that I could be a little more prepared with. And yours is very similar to mine. Because you want to be just like me. You you have no original ideas. Kathy and I just went kidding. to... So this is mine, and that's yours. I don't know what you're trying to start here, because I bought my quantity <laughs> before you even walked into the booth. That's true. Which is the whole reason you went in there, because you couldn't be left out. But you you can see it's got sort of like a, a, a like mahogany, burgundy, uh, blue, and then that gray and brown. Okay. You can't see that from back here. But you can up, up close. You just took over. Are you going to do the rest of it? Oh, sorry. I don't know what you're doing here. So this is the same sport two-ply. It's labeled as just 100% wool. I don't know that they share a specific blend or breed. I would say it's a... Rustic. Yeah, a rustic non-superwash wool, similar to what you would find like in the Harrisville or Jameson okay. type yarns. So... Uh, I would say rustic and beautifully heathered, but, but still soft. Michelle was wearing a sweater the second day that was knit out of this, and actually her sweater was considerably softer washed mm -hmm. compared to even the yarn in the skein, and I would say it's not unpleasant at all here, no. but it was beautiful on. So I got yarn. I'm, I'm going to make up numbers I think the cone has so around 1,750 yards, and each of these is about a quarter of that. So quick math. 440-ish. Yeah, 440-ish, 430. So this is plenty to make a sweater. I also went in there with our friend Kathy because At she was... a really was, good price point. Yeah, fan, fantastic uh, price for so sweater definitely, quantity. Definitely. For, the, for the, the quality of the yarn... I feel like it's very reasonably priced. I mean, it's really nice yarn, very affordable. So you showed that that has a lot of different colors in it. It's mm -hmm. kind of a taupey color, but so many, so many colors inside mm -hmm. of it. There's even bits of yellow. And I got these four complementary colors. 
I also have not picked out a pattern, but wasn't going to... I mean, you can't be at Rhinebeck and not be inspired by all of the color work and colored sweaters. What was the one, the Andrea Maori pattern that everyone had on? Illuminate. The Illuminate. Not everyone. There were but... so many beautiful versions of it. Oh my gosh. That was so fun, too, to get to see a sweater like the Illuminate on so many people getting to see different color combinations and different interpretations and how people made adjustments. That was a lot of fun. So I decided I wanted to knit a colorwork sweater. I'm still working on pattern ideas, but I bought plenty of yarn. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's called Dark Heather. This particular color is labeled. Oh, mine is not. The cone, your cone might be. I think the cones are labeled, but the individual skeins were not. So those are my two purchases, uh, two sweater quantities of yarn. It's not labeled. Oh, yeah. Mine was. <laughs> so two sweater quantities of yarn. I have one pattern picked out and ready to go in my head. The other one, I have no idea what I'm going to do with. We I found a really realized... cute fox pattern, but then I saw three other things on Instagram the other day that I wanted to knit. Oh my gosh, my stomach is growling. <laughs> is that what that was? <laughs> It's been a while since we've had breakfast. Sorry about that. Ooh, I just realized I made pie last night. Apple pie. And I I want some of that real bad. Should we get into knitting? I think that's are we it. Done with, are we done with purchases? I bought a couple of other things at Bartlett Yarns, like dryer balls and cat toys, but nobody cares about that. That's not true. This is one of the cat toys, and it's it really looks like a felted. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say it. Hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't shown them to the cats yet, and they're gonna go nuts. This, is this one that has catnip in it? I don't know, but it has a little wire in it, so you can, you could like make it into different shapes. Our cats are all obsessed with wool. They are, for sure, snobs. They don't like to lay on acrylic blankets. No. They don't like to lay on cotton blankets. Although they will lay on quilts, but if mm. if they have the choice of wool versus any other fiber, a wool hand knit one hundred percent flock to wool. Yeah, they they go. Is that a sheep joke? But a bunch. So this is the cat toy. I got another little one that's a little ball with a bell in it. But <laughs> this is so funny. Anyway, okay. those are my Rhinebeck purchases. So we're an hour and two minutes in. We briefly covered four months of our lives and Rhinebeck. I mean we're not doing too bad. We were incredibly busy, but in reality not much not much happened. Let's talk knitting. Yeah. Total shift uh, of gears here. What are you wearing? Oh, okay. Uh this is the cellula cellula shawl. I can't remember who it's from or by, but it is out of the Plucky Scholar DK, which mm. is one of their like cashmere bases. Doesn't it have cashmere and alpaca and mm -hmm. yeah. delicious things in it? Um, I bought it as a kit. And it is, it's a, I mean, it's a nice size shawl, but it's very lightweight and cozy. It's worsted. It's correct? an Aaron weight. Oh, Aaron weight. But it's, is, is it knit like on an 11? I think. Or a 10? I think a 10. So it's, the, the point of that is it's, it weighs nothing. Right. It's very lightweight. In fact, I wore that one day when we were there. And it is so comfortable. I love this. I also have a yarn for a gray one. Where's the blue? Who knows? I don't know. But I, I'm going to make a second one. Okay. Um, what are you wearing? I'll talk about it in a second. But I'm wearing my Oxonian sweater. Because we're getting into knitting, it's a finished object. But this is my Oxonian sweater, which I test knit. Uh, it's a new pattern coming out from Vincent uh, by Dell's Designs, I think is technically what the designs are called. Like our son. Yes. You'll find them. Max and Vincent. Correct. We'll have a link. Uh, to them, the pattern hasn't come out yet. I think it's going to be coming out, he said, in January. But I finished this. It was a test knit and a lot of fun. I actually got my ends woven in and got it blocked while we were in Rhinebeck, which was fun. So, sticking with annual tradition... Wait, I'm... what is happening? Are we going into f knitting finished objects? I don't have finished objects. Well then, that's a lie. I do have one, but it's not knitting. Stand by. Hmm. Stand down. We had a plan. Did you're going. You're going rogue. I don't know what you're doing right now. It's been so long. If we're gonna talk finished objects, we're gonna make it happen. Okay. So here's my sweater. It's finished. That's it. 
No, I'm just kidding. So the, <laughs> this is my Oxonian sweater, which I had started when we were together last in July. I actually started it in June. Oh, there's a cat under me. I started it and finished it with our our ladies of knitting. And I'll stand up just a little our bit. Our ladies of perpetual knitting. So it's a Henley style sweater. So you can see the open collar. It has a little collar detail all the way around. It's knit with a raglan construction. Very well written. A lot of a fun, fun to little, knit. Almost like placket detail. Oh, sorry. Yep. <laughs> I'm just exposing you yeah. to the world. Let me put it back on. <laughs> Awkward. This is this is not a children's show, apparently. <laughs> so yes, Cover it, your delicate. it does have a nice placket detail uh, here on the Henley. I seamed mine just a little bit together at the bottom so that it wouldn't open up quite so much. Although it doesn't, or it didn't until you pulled it open and tried to rip it off of me in front of everyone. It's not written for buttons, but if you wanted to, I think it would be easy to add buttonholes. Or even just for if you decoration. Want to button up. Like, I'm wearing a Henley, and I rarely button the top button or even the yeah. second one. You could just add buttons on the side of it just for detail. You could, but Kathy said if you're going to put buttons, they better be real. So you've now shamed yourself. Anyway. The construction is a raglan type construction. It has a marled section uh, here at the top, then a, another color, and then a marled section before it goes into the bottom. I knit this out of your Bearded Pearl Twisty Sock yarn, and the three colors are linen, gilded, gilded, and jam. I'm not looking at the right page over here. <laughs> Let's actually go to the page that has the information I'm needing right here. There we go. So I knit the size 44. This was a test knit. It's got just a regular ribbed cuff on the sleeve and on the bottom of the sweater. And I really love how it turned out. If it's great, I've got a couple of pictures that you took while we were there that we'll share. I'll post. I do have a Ravelry page created, but it's created with a link that I don't think works yet because it's linked to the test pattern that hasn't been published. So I, I do have some notes. For the most part, I followed the instructions as written. Uh, the only change that I made, uh, Vincent had sent out an email asking for some feedback specifically around the collar. And I didn't check my gauge. We know I don't do that when I test it. Surprise to no one. I do it all the like literally all the time, except when I'm test knitting patterns. But the the sweater is knit. I did do a gauge swatch for the sweater itself, which is knit on a US 6, which is a four millimeter needle. And then the placket and collar are knit on a US 1. I did not check my gauge, so my gauge could have been off, but I did decrease. I didn't use as many stitches in the collar in my final sweater. I knit it as written the first time and Vincent had asked for some feedback on the collar and I ended up taking it out and re-knitting the collar as written just with fewer stitches and it lays really nicely now so it I mean you can see it it just lays really flat the placket as you showed is knit really nicely it's just on the fingering you know it's what I didn't say this is the twisty sock fingering weight it's held double for the pattern which is how you get the marled section so you're holding two strands of one color then one of each for the marl, then two of the new color, one of each, and so on. For the placket details, you're using just a single strand on the one. So you go and for the the placket and the collar right. are both knit that same way. And so it's it's got really nice detail. I'm actually glad that I ripped out the collar. I didn't redo the placket, the placket was fine, but I I'm glad I ripped out the collar because I did a better job. I picked the stitches up differently the second time I knit it. The first time I was having trouble with them, the the it color flared was out. flaring out a little bit, which I thought I might be able to block out. But I think a lot of that was how I picked up the stitches and I did a much nicer job the second time picking up the stitches. I don't remember what I did differently, but. Looks great. Yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. So it, it's actually knit double. You can see on the inside, well, I don't know how well you can see, but you pick up and knit then purl a row, 
or knit on the wrong side is actually what you're doing. And then that creates a little bump along the edge and then you go back and knit and do a, a three needle bind off. So you end up with a, a nice finished detail on both sides. I also laughed, uh, Vincent's looks much nicer right here than mine does. So he's a wizard. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the pattern. I just think I was not as careful maybe as I should have been, but I love it. It fits really well. The pattern is very well written. I think it'll be nice for anyone looking for a Henley style sweater. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It looks great. Thanks. So if we're, if we're doing finished objects, I do have one. Um, and this was in my wool applique endeavors. This is the Scaredy Cat on Pumpkin Ornament from Buttermilk Basin. So this is the kit. I did not make it an ornament, um, mainly because I forgot that it was an ornament. <laughs> so I forgot Oops. to put the, t the little... Change of plans. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so here's the little, the little kitty. Oops. It looks pretty close. Seasonally appropriate. Yeah. And now that we have a little black kitty of our own. Um, so that's that's the front, and the back is just a, a pumpkin-colored herringbone patterned wool. Uh, a lot of fun. I think our plan, we didn't, we talked about this before we started. We've both, well, you much more than me, but we've done a lot of sewing. Yes. Relative to our knitting over the last few months. So what we decided is we would do all the sewing all at once. So there's a lot more fun stuff to show. And share that with you in a couple of weeks. But we'll do that next Because you, you have a lot of projects that you're in various stages of. Yes. A lot of hand sewing is yeah. what I was thinking. Do you have another finished object? I do. I have one more. These are my pride socks. Pride happened in June. I did. Technically. <laughs> pride month happened in June. Right. Officially pride month. And... Actually, I cast them on the same weekend that I cast on my Oxonian when we were on our little knitting retreat with the ladies in the western part of the state. So I cast them on then, but I set them aside because of school and I had a deadline for the test knit of the sweater. But I did finish them a few weeks ago. So these are my finished socks. I've got the cable twisted off to the side so you can see it here on the blocker, but it's on the top of the foot. But these are the Elder Wand socks. Oh, I'm on the wrong page here. This is a pattern by Matt Akers that fittingly was in his Pride pattern collection last year. It was a 2020 collection, and he had a different sock pattern for every color of the Pride flag. So I think there's seven patterns total in the set. But this is the Elder Wand. It's got a nice cable right on the front. And the yarn I used is Timber Yarns in the colorway Over the Rainbow. And Heather was kind enough to send each of us a skein of her self-striping yarn, and this is the one that she sent me. It's a really brightly colored neon rainbow. I love the, not marled, but almost tonal, like a kettle dyed look in the individual colors. And the original pattern was knit with a, a solid yarn. This, So the, the pattern sample was written with a solid yarn, and I thought, why not knit cables with self-striping. And I actually think it turned out really well. The cable pattern isn't overly intricate, and I don't think they compete with each other. I don't think it's distracting at all. And I'm really glad that I did. The heel and toe are actually in Trilogy Yarns something. Nancy, help, help us out if you happen to see this. This is one of the mini skeins from her Halloween advent that we had left over yes. from last year. So this was last year's Halloween Advent set. And I thought they actually matched really well. So if you look here in the sock, so this is the dark blue color. It's right here again. So like denim indigo. It's right here. And you almost can't even tell, like looking at the back of the sock, what I loved about this is this is probably a little bit more tonal than the actual stripe in the sock, but the color is almost identical. So I thought this was a nice way to blend them in. In fact, the heel happened to land in exactly the right spot in the pattern for the colors. So the purple and then the dark blue before the light blue. So I finished this pair. It has the anatomical toe that I usually knit. 
I did do something a little bit differently though. You know, my experiment for stitch count and needle size continues. And I've been knitting 72 stitch socks on a US zero two millimeter. And they're not, they fit well and they wear well all day, but I wanted just a couple of additional stitches. And because this was a cable, I thought the cable might pull that too tight. So I did 76 stitches and then just adjusted when I got to the heel. I did 40 on the front and kept 36 on the back so that I could use a stitch count that I was familiar with for the heel flap and heel turn. So I modified the toe just a little bit to add a couple of extra increase rounds to get me from 76 down to something that was reasonable, but they fit perfectly. They fit so well, in fact, that the next two socks I've cast on have both been 76 on the zero because I really like that combo. So second finished object. Do you have any more finished objects? No, I have a hoe. Okay. Is it the same one I have? No. That's not a hoe. Well, I guess I don't have one that's half finished. Do you want to show your hoe first? <laughs> I mean, here's my hoe. Rude. We have to have a little bit of fun. Yes. This is the other reason that I haven't gotten a lot done lately. I actually have been doing a surprising amount of knitting, considering that I have no time because I've been test knitting a shawl that is... Super secret. Super secret, and I can't talk about it at all. Until January. Yeah. Until, or show it. Until later. But but I have finished a shawl, and I was working on this test knit, and I knit a sample for Michelle for Indie Untangled. So this is the Oasis sock, and that's a pattern by Paula... Perriera? Per I can't say that. Uh, we'll, we'll post it appropriately. I should have looked at that before now so I could figure it out. This is a Neutrino pattern. If you're not familiar with Neutrino, it is a new app that's available, I think, for both Android and iPhone. And it is a combination. I think their description says something like doing for knitting what Google Maps did for maps. So it, it takes, it's a, a pattern library. The patterns are specific to Neutrino. They're a little bit more expensive than what you might find for the same type of pattern on Ravelry. But Neutrino's feature is that it walks you through everything step by step. So if you're new to knitting or you like a lot of help along the way, it has built-in tutorial videos. So let's say you're casting on and you've never cast on before, there's a video for how to cast on. If your pattern includes things like knit two together and slip slip knit, there are tutorial videos built into the pattern and it, it breaks everything down step by step. So for example, if you were knitting a sock, there's a section for the cuff. It gives you the cuff information. When you're done with that, you kind of check the box and go on to the next step. So for someone looking for a lot of guidance or a lot of support along the way, the Neutrino app is really helpful. I, because I knit a lot of socks, kind of ignored some of those features because I was using the pattern as a guide for my sock, but I knit it in the way I would normally knit a sock. I think the pattern was written toe up. So you just reversed construction. I same, did. Same pattern. You just knit it from the same, same pattern as in the, the textured pattern, the detail of the sock. Right. But I disregarded the toe up, whatever their toe, heel, and cuff were, and just knit my own sock. So I did knit this top down. But this is in Woolens and Nosh. Fancy schmancy pumpkins. Fancy schmancy pumpkins, which I had a really funny name for that now I've forgotten. It was something boozy. But bougie. No, it was boozy. Yeah. Anyway. Irrelevant. This is in Michelle Superwash Targi base, which is beautiful. And she had this colorway at the show, and Neutrino was, I believe, a sponsor of Indie Untangled. And this pattern was the featured pattern. So I made a sample for Michelle to have there in the booth. 
and I love it, and I can't wait to finish the second one. I threw in a little extra stripe on the toe, because why not? It's, it's really fun. Yeah, turned out really well. Again, 76 stitches on a US zero, two millimeter. And then the front of the sock, it's the same on both sides, so a nice panel down the center. It's a, a nice combination of a rib and then almost like a garter detail. Gives it a really nice texture. It wasn't overly complicated. It was really easy to follow. So that's my my hope. Okay. Okay. Whips. Whips. What you got? Um well we're we're working on one together. Kind we, of. We are. So annually you knit a pair of the Oktoberfest socks by Susan Dittrich. Dittrich. Um so I haven't gotten a you know, it's October 31st. and To be fair, we just cast them on a week ago. That's true. And I, I did start a sweater. Um, and I did sew a quilt. Also, my tradition is to knit a pair annually, but not, not necessarily, necessarily in October. Finish them in October. So this is this is the start of mine. This remember, was also the pattern? not on our radar. This right. was a surprise from friends of ours. Right, but fun. So I have just started the cabling of mine, and I am using Marie and Co. Woolgoods on her 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon Sock Base. I'm knitting mine on a US2, which is a 2.75 millimeter. I have started to knit most of my socks on a... This is the pattern. Oktoberfest Socken. Yes. So I have started to knit most of my socks on a US one and a half, which is a 2.5 millimeter, because I like just that little bit of extra snugness without changing my stitch count. Um, but I am knitting this one on a two because it's heavily cabled. So I think that'll be just fine. So here's the yarn. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the, actually. <laughs> the color is called divination. Uh, this was part of Sarah's... Harry, I can't remember what it is, but Harry we have more Potter than one. Colorway. Um, so that's mine. What are yours? I mentioned this wasn't on our radar. Even though I knit a pair every year, I wasn't actually thinking about it. Right. And I got a call from our friend Jen, who was with our other friend Ani, who both live in Tennessee. They're people that I knew from when I lived there, and we've kept in touch. They're still great friends of ours. And they were so excited, they called us one night on FaceTime and said, we're going to knit the Oktoberfest socks and we're going to knit them together. And I said, well, if you're knitting them, I'm going to knit them too. So we decided to do uh, an impromptu knit along for the socks, which is a lot of fun. Before I show mine, I'll just show the pattern one more time. This is a, a great pattern if you're looking for a cabled sock that's not too complicated. The sock is a two by two rib all around the cuff and the top of the foot, except you'll see here there's a nice cable that looks like a, a pretzel. So the braid looks like a pretzel in the spirit of Oktoberfest. So it's not overly complicated if you've not knit cables before or you've not knit a cabled sock. And, oh my gosh, I can't get it out. I am knitting mine in the cornucopia colorway that we showed you earlier. So Michelle's Indie Untangled colorway. You can see how the, the colors are starting to come up. I'm really excited about it. So I decided... It's a beautiful color. Fantastic. Boy, that first group. I mean, they were gone off the display in less than 10 minutes. So this is the, the back so you can see the colors. And I've finished the first half of a repeat. So I think I'm 16 rows in. You can see the little pretzel. It's probably a little hard to see in the self-striping yarn. There it is. And then it, it does a pretzel the other way. So I've started that. It's going to be very informal. I have to finish my test knit shawl, which if I'm productive, I will finish tonight. I have two rows in the cast off, which is a lot of stitches, but it should be fine. And then I want to get started on this or get going on this. And I want to cast on my sweater. So Oktoberfest socks. I have no idea what I'm doing for the heels and toes yet. It's TBD. I'm very tempted to do something. I think we have a yarn this color upstairs, kind of a chartreuse -y 
something that's already wound into a ball. If only we had yarn, what would I do? Yeah, so this will be my fifth pair. We were counting them up mm -hmm. earlier today. This will be my fifth pair. This was actually the very first knit along that you and I did together. It was. That was some six odd years ago. Yeah. Um, so I have knit my swatch and cast on for my sweater. So the the Rhinebeck yarn that I purchased, the Cormo, I knit my swatch for the Jones Cardigan by Tin Can Knits. So there's the... Mm -hmm. And this is just the... So the swatch is knit in the, the moss stitch pattern. And I'll show you what the sweater looks like. There it is on a tiny human. A tiny human and a regular sized human. Or I should say an adult sized human. Oh yeah, he's wearing it too. Yes. Um, Typical to Tin Can Knits patterns, they make them available in every size from basically infant to... Anyone you can think of. Um, so this, adult humans. This is, this is a, a better picture. <laughs> Picture of the texture. <laughs> picture. Um, my hand's so shaky. I apologize. But so... That moss stitch and then the cable. And so that that was my swatch. I, I did have to go down a uh, needle size from the main body of the sweater. So I am knitting mine on US 3s, which is a 3.25 for the ribbing, which is what the pattern says and a US 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter, which is a needle smaller than what the pattern recommends. When I knit it on the 6, I had an extra like, quarter of an inch. Um, and again, I chalked that up to the yarn being heavier than a light worsted, because the pattern says DK or light worsted. I love you're so offended by the fact that no, you no, weren't no. on gauge on the needle. Because no, I'm not offended, but it is it is very much, I mean, that, that's that's a solid worsted weight yarn. You do pride yourself, though, on somehow always getting gauge on the needle the pattern is written for. I don't pride, but I do, except for this time. <laughs> but anyways. Whereas I almost, I was so surprised that when I was knitting the Oxonian that I was on gauge for the needle recommendation for the pattern because that never, that happens, never happens for me. I always have to go down a needle size. So I have gotten as far as knitting my bottom ribbon. And stabbing me in the face. And my initial setup row. So the setup row oh, this is, is where you have all of your markers uh, to separate the panels of cables and moss stitch. Mm -hmm. So I have placed all of those. It is, it's, it's lovely to knit with. It feels so nice washed. Mm -hmm. And it's not unpleasant unwashed. Oh no, it's, Cormo is so nice to knit with. It's so squishy yes. and spongy. And this is, is this a woolen spun? Did we decide that? I don't think it is. Hmm. Yeah, it's so, beautiful. Like, I don't know. Um... But yeah, I love it. And like I said, this is this is my swatch. And so, the texture so is springy. Beautiful. Yeah, that's going to be great. That's a pretty sweater. I saw more than one person at Rhinebeck wearing that cardigan. I have had this on my to knit list for a long time. I actually knit one to the shoulders and then realized I grabbed one skein of yarn that was the wrong dye lot. So when I went and I had just gotten enough yarn that... I couldn't, I couldn't fudge it and not use that skein. Um, and I, it was too late already to incorporate it into the sweater somehow. It was very noticeably different, and I had not noticed that when I bought them. Um, so I actually had to rip that sweater, sweater out. I will reuse that yarn, but I'm going to re-knit it in this. And That can be so tricky. You remember when I knit my Wixom with undyed yarn. Right. Every individual skein... I mean, it's undyed. There's no complaint to the the mill or anything, but they were all different. And part of why I decided to hold mohair with it that you dyed all at once to be a solid color was to try and blend out some mm -hmm. of the color changes between the skeins, and you can still see every... I ended up changing every other right side row 
alternating skeins the whole time, and you can see every single place that I changed. And most skeins. of the time, but I've embraced it. I'm okay. Right. Most of the time, that works out fine. And if as long as you're consistent, I don't think it matters. So as long as it's consistently right one or the I other, I mean, it's, it's the reality. Right. Um, I think it looks good. As long as it's consistent. I do have to compliment you, actually. I was just now remembering that we had a conversation in Rhinebeck. The ladies asked me if I had alternated skeins in this sweater. And I think I, I used one and a half skeins. The stripe is actually supposed to be up here, probably in a more flattering place on my chest. <laughs> but I can't follow instructions. That was me disregarding the pattern and being unwilling to rip an inch and a half back. But I used a skein and a half in the upper part, in the, the chest portion, and then I used, I think, three, three different skeins. I didn't alternate anything, not one thing. I transitioned from one skein to the next, and you couldn't find, you couldn't find it if you needed to. Yeah. It's funny, the sleeve looks really short when I'm holding my arm out, but it's actually not it's not, <laughs> it's not, it, it fit, it it's very well. not short at all. I don't I well I've been pulling it up. Um anyway, just a, yeah. a nice compliment. Thank you. Oh sure. So that is all I'm working on. Look, I have no other pages. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Well we survived. We Early. survived. Welcome back. Um we're glad to be back. To close it on out, we'll say can I grab him? Oh, sleepy kitty. Hi, little buddy. Oh, this is my sweet little baby. Yeah. Who I don't know if you got to see has a tiny little white <laughs> white spot on his tail. We had such a fun time wondering what color he was going to be, as a teeny tiny little. I was gonna say cream horn, like eclair sized baby. I mean, he was literally. <laughs> I was trying to figure out where you were going with that. Now, why don't you want to be sweet? He was like a, the size of a he deck was of cards. Sound asleep. He was so fluffy, and we thought he might be medium hair or long haired. Mm -hmm. And then when he was like four to six weeks old, he was so striped. Mm -hmm. he like had a ton he had of stripes. stripes everywhere, and you, you can, can kind of see them if you if you look closely. You can see them on his legs a little bit. So we thought he might be a black smoke, and he has a little white spot on his chest. He has one on his belly, and then the tip of his tail. Mm -hmm. But he's gotten very shiny. He, I mean, he just felt like velvet as a baby. It was so fluffy, but he's gotten very slick and very black, and he's very sweet. He likes to snuggle with me. He does. This morning I woke up and he was under the covers, <laughs> snuggled up right next to me. Also fully the boss of the house. Oh yeah. And has been since he could walk. He he has taken over and, and all of the other cats bow down to his presence. And he's not mean mm -mm. at all, but he is fully in charge. Yeah. Absolutely. Which the tiny been, one rules the house. Which has been a scream. And he and Gus are peas in a pod. They spend most of the day... They adore each playing other. ...playing together, sleeping together. We we did ourselves while we did you. We we get to enjoy them all the time. But we, we could have done a better job posting some of the really cute pictures we have of the two of them along the way. And they are their best buddies. And it's been a lot of fun having two of them, actually. Here's a good one. It's been a lot of work. They just love each other so much. Yeah, hold on. There we go. I mean, all day, every day, they're in the bed together. They're piled up somewhere together. And uh, so a lot of fun. So I guess we will wrap it up. We're at an hour and 34 minutes. Yes. We have a lot of sewing to show you mm -hmm. that we decided not to show you today. There, there will be a shop update in November sometime. I'm not sure when. But just... November sometime. November sometime. Yeah. Otherwise, it was great to meet so many of you in it's person. It's been good to do it again. Hopefully, thanks for coming back. You didn't yeah. get too tired of us <laughs> not being around. We had quite a few comments about not having recorded lately yes. in person. Like I said, we took the summer off. We needed it. There's just, you know, too much stuff happening, and you have to give something up in order to make something else work. So, we're back. 
We're woolier than ever. Now that we've just stuck, woolier? stocked oh. up on Rhinebeck. I just realized you left that box right there. I know. Whatever. It's fine. The Busted Pearl. The Busted Pearl. Welcome back. <laughs> Great to see everyone. Glad to be with you. Thanks for joining us. We will see you again at some soon. undetermined and uncommitted day in the future. Could be soon. Could be could further be, away could soon. Could be not <laughs> soon. <laughs> could be less soon yeah. but it's great to be with you thanks for spending time with us and we'll see you again next time bye bye everybody <laughs>